Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk about using LEDs to light your locomotives. Over the last few years, most manufacturers have switched to LEDs instead of using bulbs, like they did so much in the past for their uh, for their models. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, using LEDs for a number of years to replace bulbs as well. And I've been using these three millimeter ones. However, recently I switched and I've been using a lot of these um, small surface mount LEDs that come pre-wired with the 1000 ohm resistor. So what I want to do is show you both methods because, you know, there's still applications where both of them can be quite useful. So I'll show you how to do it in a, uh, do it with one of each uh, in locomotives that I've uh, uh, installed decoders in recently. So, but before we get started on that, I want to thank everybody who subscribed to the channel recently. You know, in the 24 hours after I uh, posted that last video with the request or with reminder to subscribe, we had over 100 additional subscribers uh, to the channel, and we're now up over 3,000 subscribers. So the next big goal is 5,000, which at the current rate of increase should be sometime midsummer, maybe, uh, mid to late summer, July, August, sometime in that period. So go ahead, you know, talk it up with your friends, your club members, um, your wife, your kids, you know, your dog, your cat, get everybody signed up to the DCC Guy channel. So let's go ahead and move on and take a look at these uh, LEDs. When it comes to LEDs, you know, you, these are polarized devices, which means that basically they have a positive and a negative terminal, okay? And if they're not uh, properly uh, hooked up to a power source, then you're not gonna get light because they will only pass electrons in one direction, they're not like a light bulb that, you know, is, it doesn't matter which way you hook them up. So how do you tell these apart? Let me zoom in a little bit here. Take a closer look at these. Now, these are our two LEDs, okay? The one on the right here is, um, is from Digitrax, and they sell these in, I think, you know, packages of 10. So you can get these from just about any you know, Digitrax dealer. They're a gold and white LED, and um, they uh, operate off about, they require about a three volt power source. And I'll show you how you can tell that in a minute. This one here on the light, on the left, it has about the same light. It's available from uh, richmondcontrols.com. And I've been using these from him for a number of years. Uh, I picked these up. I think I got these, I think Streamline Backshop, uh, uh, has these in stock from Digitrax. They're a Digitrax dealer. So most Digitrax dealers should be able to get you these. Now, typically, the way you tell the positive from the negative leg is if you look here, hopefully you can see this, one of these legs is slightly longer than the other one. The longer leg is positive, the shorter leg is negative. And what I do is I always mark that uh, with a little bit of red um, marker right there. You can see it maybe. So I just put a dot of, of red uh, ink there because I typically cut these things off right about here. Now, another way that you can tell these is, and this is not true for all of them, but typically on the negative side of the case here, the plastic or resin case, whichever it is, I'm not sure, there's usually a flat spot molded in. Now on this one, the Digitrax one, there is no flat spot. On this one from Richmond Controls, there is a flat spot either molded molded in here on the uh, negative side of the, uh, or the negative leg anyway, of the contact terminals. So that's the easiest way to tell them. But, you know, once you cut them off, how do you know? Well, you know, you might, and, and let me point out something else. I've been getting uh, LEDs recently more in the, the red and green variety where the legs are the same length and where they don't have any flat spot. So how do you tell them? Well, as I said, these different one, different LEDs have different uh, voltage requirements. And um, basically what I do is I have several of these uh, battery holders that I got from um, allelectronics.com. This one holds two uh, AA batteries. I've got one that holds a single uh, AA battery. And so that'll give you one and a half volts. This will give you three volts. So right away, you've got a tester there. So all you have to do is 
hook up the testers, the, the contacts or the leads from the battery. This is the three volt one. And you can see that once I've got it hooked up, the light comes on. And that's because this is the positive and that's the negative. Remember, red is positive, black is negative. So immediately, even if you don't have any kind of exterior markings on the LED, you can test and find out what the positive leg is and what the negative leg is. And it also tells you immediately whether that LED works or not. And just to show you, these will not work if they're in reverse polarity. So you've got to get them correct, and that means you've got to install them correct in your locomotive or they won't work. If you install them and they don't work, suspect that you got them backwards. Now, the same thing holds true for these uh, small surface mount LEDs that I've got here, and I'll show you that. Now, these are have a 1,000 ohm resistor on them, so they're good, you know, for 12 to 18 volts, I believe, is what the manufacturer uh, rates them at. So what I typically will do then is I've got my little 9 volt battery here and with the same type of contacts or leads on it anyway, excuse me, and let's go ahead and hook it up. Okay, so you can see how bright that is once it's hooked up properly. Now in all the, of these that I've been getting lately, the wire with the uh, built-in resistor, the 1000 ohm resistor here, uh, is the positive uh, lead and the other one is negative. So that's a quick and easy way to check those and confirm what, uh, what you have purchased as far as polarity on these. So now let's talk about how do I go about, let me zoom out a little bit, how do I go about preparing these for an installation? Well, in most cases where I'm using one of these uh, three millimeter uh, bulb-like LEDs, I'm going to be using those uh, with a, uh, a plastic insert lens on the locomotive model itself. So what I want to do in order to allow me to attach the LED to the back of this lens, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute, I usually take these and using a pair of track cutters, I simply just cut the end of the LED off, and that gives me a nice flush cut. Now the actual LED part is way down here uh, at the base. So you can cut that off and sand it down smooth and get a nice flat surface there so that you can glue this literally to the back of a small plastic lens like this one here. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do that. And I'll show you that in a minute. As far as these other guys, I've got a different trick. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me go ahead and we'll uh, switch uh, gears here and I'll bring the locomotives over and show you how I go about installing these. Okay, what I have here is the headlight uh, insert that goes in this uh, FP7. It has a nice little plastic insert. So how do I prepare this for uh, adding an LED? Well, using my fingers of steel, I grip this sucker and using this 564 inch drill bit, I drill a hole. Okay, so what I've done then is drill the hole in the back of this and you can see it's about halfway through the thickness of this um, of this lens. And that is just deep enough for me to insert one of these surface mount LEDs into it. So you can take a look. So you can see that that fits in there. So that's exactly how I do that. Just drill a hole deep enough to get the entire LED in there. You can bend it at a slight angle and, in, and then insert it. But it's going to light up that whole plastic uh, casting. So once I've got that inserted in there, I take some of my Uhu Tech Pro Power Putty, and it's this little uh, ball of uh, gray black stuff here that I've shown you. I've shown you this before. And then once the um, once I have the LED ready to install, I can just put that in there. Of course, this would be with it in the locomotive, and then I just put a little bit of this black tech behind it, and that's going to hold it in place inside there. And when that sucker lights up, it is going to be bright and it's going to fill the whole area of this lens with light. 
Okay, so I'll give you an idea of how bright this is going to be. I've got the uh, LED hooked up to my 9-volt power source. And then we'll insert that into the opening here. And you can see it's going to be a very nice bright headlight. So no problems at all with that. And then you just take, like I said, take a bit of this Uhu putty. We'll put this back in here real quick for a demo. And just put a blob of that on the end. And you can see that's going to hold it in there. And we're going to have a good bright headlight once that's installed. Let's take a quick look then. Um, if you look inside here, you can see I've inserted the uh, LED into the back of that bulb and pushed this little blob of Uhu putty in here to hold it in place. And then I brought the wires down and used some Kapton tape here. That's this orange tape, or yellow tape you see. And that holds the wires in place. And then, you know, I've simply wired that up to the contacts on my uh, on the front here of this uh, Soundtracks plug and play uh, decoder that I've installed in this FP7. So at this point all I would need to do is pop the shell on and I'm ready to go with headlights. So what I want to do now is go ahead and show you how I install uh, one of these uh, standard 3 millimeter LEDs for the headlight of this Athern uh, RS3. Now you note here one of the issues is that Athern uses uh, small incandescent bulbs to fit into the openings here on this uh, headlight. Now what I've done is taken those out and tossed them because they burned out a long time ago. And I filled that with um, our tester's uh, clear uh, uh, parts glue. And you can use that to make windows and, and you know seal all kinds of things. You could use canopy glue. It's just a type of acrylic, I believe, that dries clear. So I put that in the end here of each one of these openings and let that dry. And it gives you a crystal clear lens that uh, doesn't protrude out like those Athern bulbs do. So let me go ahead and show you how I install a, uh, a, a light in there. So basically, I'm going to try to get this in the camera where you can see what I've already done. Let's zoom in just a little bit here on this one. And I think you can see here, see if I can hold this still. Um, basically, you can see the headlight casting right here where it comes through the back of the shell. And then right here attached to the back of that is this LED that I cut the head off of and made it flat. So I sanded that. And then what I do is I put a little bit of that Loctite gel glue, uh, super glue, that I've been telling you about in the last video I did. And, um, and then just, you know, have that set up. And then I just use my uh, Kapton tape to stabilize the um, wires and run them back, further back. And I'm going to zoom out now. And you can see here... I have a uh, TCS four-wire, four-color uh, wiring harness. And I've got the red and the black attached to this, uh, the terminals uh, on the, or the leads, the legs, whatever you want to call them, on this LED. And then I've got a, uh, a, an orange and a gray back here to go to the other LED. So let me show you that. Okay, so here I've taken the LED let me zoom in a bit now. And you can see the I've cut it so that it's flat at the end, cut that tip off. And I've sanded it a little bit to get me a nice flush finish. And then on the positive leg, I've used the orange wire instead of red and gray uh, on the uh, negative instead of black. So they're close enough, okay? And then what I have is a connector here um, that's the male connector. And on the uh, locomotive itself, I have the female connector. And it's hooked up to the appropriate uh, positive and negative contacts uh, there on the decoder. So I can put this together here on the bench top, plug it into the locomotive, and pop the shell on, and it'll be ready to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at installing this. 
One thing I previously talked about was using this uh, Zap uh, Zip Kicker, which is basically an accelerant that you can use on super glue to make it set up almost instantly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, you noticed I took my light Loctite uh, gel out of its package because once this thing seems to be empty, there's about a third of a tube of, of super glue left in here. So it's fairly straightforward to get that out of there. So what I'm going to do is just take and put just a touch on the end of this LED. Put that down. And let me go ahead and open my little jar here of kicker. And I'm going to use one of these uh, little uh, micro brushes that I've told you about. Uh, these are makeup micro brushes. You can get them on eBay for next to nothing. Okay, so let me get this by its little legs. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here and move this into position here on the rear of this lens casting. And then just apply some of this zip kicker. And if I got enough of each on there, you can see that that uh, LED is now stuck nicely to the back of the headlight casting. So that is nice and stable. Okay, so that's in there. Next, I take a little piece of my uh, Kapton tape, and I use this because it's, you know, very sticky. It's heat stable. It holds up for very well for a long, long time. So let's get this in here, and this will stabilize the wires so that when I'm messing around with the harness and making the uh, connections and anything like that, I'm not going to pull that super glue contact loose there. Okay, so there, there it's good and stable in there. Okay, so then we'll go widescreen again. All I have to do is take the uh, take the wiring harness and make this uh, connection observing wire color. So I've got my red on the bottom in each case. And we can hook that up. So now the shell is ready to go on the body. And I will go ahead and include links to various websites and to the various products that I've mentioned during this video. Now, one thing I also want to show you here is how I went about dropping the voltage for, uh, for these um, uh, regular three millimeter LEDs, because these LEDs do require that you drop the voltage down to about three volts. What I do is um, install a, uh, a couple of uh, 500 ohm resistors here on these uh, special um, mounting pads that I got from engineering.com. So you can put two uh, 500s, they, you could probably get uh, from them a 1000 ohm resistor. So I go ahead and just uh, install these resistors here. I did cover how to install these in a previous video on, on soldering the small stuff. And in that one I showed how I, uh, how I attach these surface mount resistors to uh, these uh, little uh, circuit boards. And I got these, like I said, from engineering.com. And I'll put a link for that too. And then I have, uh, in this case, I had two 500 ohms uh, to give me a thousand ohms to drop the voltage to what I needed down from uh, 12 volts to three volts. Okay. So um, take a look back at that video on soldering the small stuff, and it will show you how to go about soldering up these little uh, surface mount resistors that's about it. Have a great weekend, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again on Monday with another bonus video.